Hello everyone, I am Alexandra Kostinyuk and I am going to comment for you the final game of my online Olympiad 2021 that was played just a few hours ago so please excuse me if I sound tired because uh, actually I am quite tired that was quite intensive two weeks I played um, both games today for my Russian national team so tired but happy okay let's go let's start I was playing white against Arena Krush e4 c5 the sicilian defense and irina opted as she often does for the so-called richter rouser variation knight c6 it's a variation in the sicilian defense where black develops two knights at the same time actually i used to play this line quite a lot when i was younger so i know all the obstacles that black faces here bishop g5 e6 queen d2 and here black is at the crossroads there are several possibilities they want to develop uh to the queen side often and try to castle even there but unfortunately for them bishop d7 doesn't work immediately because this pawn on d6 starts to get attacked and will be lost so that's why usually black starts by playing a6 and defending the square on b5 and then planning to uh, develop the bishop on d7 and probably the queen on c7 and alongside castle but that's another uh, line arena played bishop to e7 that's the so-called classical variation of this rouser um, variation alongside castle and here uh, she played a6 uh, that's quite a rare move at this moment because normally uh, black does not mix up these two lines uh, and usually they opt for a short side castle here but a6 of course is possible and i took on c6 to tell you the truth i think that the most precise uh, way for white uh, to proceed here is to take on f6 and only if black takes with the bishop then take on c6 and win the pawn on d6 so that's why black uh, is more or less obliged to take uh, with the pawn on f6 thus weakening uh, the pawn structure especially on the king side and this pawn structure is considered to be uh, much better for white it's easier to play with white um, black needs to look after all these possible breakthroughs and this pawn on h7 can actually be attacked sometimes the rook white rook transfers via the third rank and attacks this pawn as well as this bishop on f1 goes to h5 in some of the lines and attacks the weakness on f7 so that's probably why uh, black does not really um, opt for this uh, variation more often mm. but in the game i decided to take on c6 first this move has its drawbacks since it kind of uh makes black's center like pawn central stronger and thus it gives black more chances to counterattack. bishop takes f6 g takes f6 bishop to c4 but i was analyzing this particular line at home recently and that's why i decided to transfer uh, to something that i uh, have more experienced uh, with but to tell you the truth uh, arena surprised me here she uh, castled uh, short side actually i analyzed more the plan with going uh, to the queen side and there are some games from very strong grandmasters that um, played like this but okay short side castle of course is a possibility it's a very risky move because as i said already king side now the position on the king side is not stable it's weakened and thus it might give my pieces more possibilities to attack so black has to be very careful about her king but at the same time if my attack doesn't bring me any result then the strong pawn center uh, can easily destroy white's position 
So um, this is a very double-edged variation. Uh, there have been some games played uh, with this exact position. In some of the games, uh, white played queen h6, which I think is a little bit premature for the moment. Uh, there was also one game where white started the attack by h4. It's possible, but in the game I played rook h2 e1, planning to transfer the rook via the third rank, either to g3 or h3, and then and create some checkmating threats. Very direct, very straightforward, king h8, but in this game I think I was playing just a little bit too straightforward. I should have uh, I should have um, prepared a little bit more my attack by playing king b1, bishop b3. Okay, in the game I was lucky enough uh, not to feel uh, the difference of the king standing on c1 but it could have been it could have been uh quite unpleasant in some of the lines if Irina would play a little bit more precise okay but as i said very straightforward without any doubt rook e3 is the last game the decisive match why to why to spend and waste some time on prophylactical moves Bish, uh, rook e3 okay rook h3 Queen h6 isn't there, so not surprisingly, uh, Arena decided to uh, play it safe and played a rook to g8. Actually, if I were Arena, I would consider uh, d5 uh, immediately. Uh, this move could lead to positions similar from the game, but at the same time, of course, it gives me some extra possibilities as, uh, for example, rook g3 or rook h3, because here, after rook g3, d takes c4 loses the game because of queen h6 attacking the queen and uh, creating a checkmating uh, threat so after rook g3 um, bishop d6 or rook g8 should um, be played and again the position is very complex but rook g8 is a good move for white for black i'm sorry and here again no doubt f4 without even thinking for a long time without hesitating, uh, protecting the pawn on g2, and again, I am getting ready. I'm getting ready for the attack, but I don't think that's the most precise mm, move in this position. Rook g3 could have uh, been a little bit stronger, or maybe even queen to e2. That's also Mm, that's a, this is a move that I like a lot because it's not only about attack because I'm getting ready, I'm getting there to this h5 square but at the same time it's, uh, mm, it's a prophylactical move because uh, after queen e2 d5 is not possible since I'm going to take on d5 and the bishop on e7 is going to be under attack and here if you look at the pawn structure it's quite sad it's quite sad for black so of course after queen e2 d5 is not possible but at the same time black's position is okay but one has to be brave to play with black for example rook takes g2 is a very brave move a courageous move and i think it's it is the right move to continue here um although it's I mean, it looks quite risky, but black has some defensive resources. For example, here, rook goes to h6 and then protects the g file from g6. Okay, but as I said in the game, only forward was my direction and intention. f4, d5, absolutely um, right decision for from black again, uh, counter strike in the center. And here, of course, I, I mean, I can retreat my bishop, but after d4 with a fork attacking the rook and the knight, I'm not going to lose this knight. I, I still have this uh, queen e1, pinning the pawn on d4, but after c5, for example, my position starts to look a little bit shaky because my attack will lead to nowhere since uh, black will easily protect this pawn on h7 with the rook and this pawns in the center queen c7 c4 is coming a lot of troubles so that's why of course i didn't waste time 
uh, of moving my bishop away. It was not needed in this game. I played queen e2, again, pinning the pawn on d5. And um, here we reach, we are at the uh, one of the key moments of the game. Black has many interesting possibilities, but you know <laughs> what... What is problematic in a chess game? You need to pick only one. You cannot make several moves. And um, Irina th thought for quite a long time and uh, found a nice idea. Alas, it doesn't really work very well. She played bishop d6, which is a good move. But I think it would have been easier for black uh, to play after queen b6. Queen b6, unpinning the pawn. Looking now at this rook on e3, and at the same time the bishop is under attack. If I just remove my bishop, if I retreat the bishop to b3, then rook takes g2 follows, and queen e3 checks, and black is going to grab on f4. And even though I mean it looks as I might have some counterplay, yeah. I do have some counterplay. The position is quite, I mean, uh, dangerous. But at the same time, it seems that black has enough to uh, protect her king and has two extra pawns. So that's why after queen b6 during the game, I was planning to take on d5 using again this uh, power on the e file and unprotected bishop on e7. After c takes d5, I was going to take with the bishop. Uh, the only problem for me uh, was this intermediate move, bishop c5, a very strong intermediate move, because after e takes d5, I take on d5 with a knight, and then it seems that I'm, uh, I'm going to win this game. But, alas, bishop c5 comes to the board, and then after bishop takes a8, bishop takes c3, king b1, bishop f4, g3, bishop goes to e5, a very strong square on the long diagonal, and the position is completely unclear. Um, I think, I'm not losing immediately, I have this strange looking move knight a4, but I think it's easier to play for black, because now it's uh, it's black who is attacking or who is going to attack, right? Uh, sooner or later the rook will come to the b-file, and this bishop on e5 looks wonderfully uh, so that was the way, I think that was the easiest way for black to continue the game. Mm, bishop c5 was also possible, but uh, after bishop c5 I have rook g3, I have rook h3 with, uh, mm, with, counter, uh, with counter attack and uh, draw might be like a, a good possibility here. For example, after rook h3, queen c7, e5 take take and if black decides to take it's not the only move they also have f6 f5 moves but it's like more complicated then uh, i need to sacrifice my rook and make a perpetual check so uh bishop c5 was another possible move and bishop d6 is not a bad move at all but the problem is that here e5 black is faced with very difficult choice because like the move that uh arena made is more or less automatic. I mean, I think 90% of the players in a rapid game especially will take on e5 and then will um, play. But the problem, I mean, actually f takes e5 is a serious mistake. Why? Let's try to understand why. Um, in, a, in a few words, this pawn is needed sometimes to close this diagonal. D1, uh, b1 h7 diagonal that's why it's so crucial to go with the bishop to f8 immediately and then it depends which road would uh, white pick which move uh, would uh, white make then make a choice either take on e5 or play f5 for example if i go uh, bishop d3 oops not here i'm sorry if i play bishop d3 here then it's better to take on e5 because this pawn will cover this b1 h7 diagonal and what's important uh, remember i was telling you about the king being on c1 and me regretting this fact this is a position because i i'd love to take on e5 with the pawn but the problem comes after bishop h6 and here comes 
Ah, uh, a very sad fact that I was not prepared for this counterplay on the c1 h6 diagonal. So bishop d3 f takes e5 is there is very strong. If I finally go away with my king to b1, then black can play queen e7 and pinning the pawn. And after bishop d3 play f5, now this pawn is needed on um, this uh, line. And if I play uh, rook h3, f takes e5 also seems to be strong again. Uh, again, the well, lines are very complex, uh, complicated, double-edged, and of course, uh, anything can happen. But luckily for me, in the game, Irina took on e5, I took on e5, and here, after bishop f8, in case of bishop f8, I can play king b1 and bishop d3, and this square on h7 is getting under attack. It's quite difficult for black to protect it all the time although the position is again more or less equal uh, but easier for um white to play after bishop e7 king b1 after bishop c7 bishop d3 a lone game is ahead of us but arena saw this very nice idea of unpinning so right now her two pieces are on the d file and she found this idea bishop c5 attacking my rook rook h3 queen g5 so two moves and two pieces are out of the d file king b1 and d takes c4 followed and that that loses the game but to tell you the truth i think this position is almost lost already at least in the practical game with three minutes on the clock queen takes g2 if black uh, takes on g2, I have queen h5. I want to checkmate my opponent. And if she plays queen g6, then queen h4 and bishop d3 threatening will follow. And if the pawn takes on c4, the same problem as in the game. The problem that if the central pawn goes away to c4, it leaves the square on e4 unprotected for my knight and the knight jumps there and, and it's heading to f6 j5 and at the same time it attacks the bishop on c5 and it's very hard to protect from all these threats so if the bishop retreats to b6 i continue the knight continues his journey to f6 rook g7 rook g3 and there are many possibilities to show beautiful checkmating patterns for example this one queen f5 queen h6 queen f8 queen takes g8 checkmate um so queen takes g2 queen h5 it's already quite quite tough uh, to protect this pawn and this position if the queen goes to g7 then bishop comes to d3 and again it's not possible to protect the square anymore after rook g7 i believe also all these possibilities with bishop d3 rook g3 are in the air and um, it makes um, black's position almost impossible to defend in a practical game but luckily for me and probably <laughs> luckily for 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 all of us arena uh, let me create this small masterpiece so she took on c4 she bravely took on c4 she accepted the challenge and the pawn the pawn went away from the center thus letting my knight fulfill his dream knight e4 okay the same situation again attacking the queen attacking the bishop and heading to f6 but wait wait a minute queen takes e5 and everything seems to be i mean black seems to be doing fine the central pawn is gone the pawn, the square on f6 is not protected for my knight anymore the bishop is protected with her queen and an extra piece and and it seems that it seems that black is doing fine and it's just white you know who didn't handle the nerves and went all in bluffed all the pieces away and but no wait everything is under control rook h5 suddenly this rook starts attacking 
on the uh, fifth rank, uh, on the fifth rank, while the fifth rank, so it went all the way to the H file while the third rank, and now it goes up to the fifth rank. Uh, after queen g7, I, I was planning to play rook g5, and then uh, winning back the bishop, and my position is uh, simply winning, because uh, black's king is very weak, black squares around it are very weak, and black's pawns are just <laughs> very weak as well. Okay, so that's why black played f5, hoping, you know, hoping for the spin, but you know, some pins can easily be neglected. And this is the case. It's the queen after all, not the king here. Knight g5. Who cares about the queen if there is a checkmate? If there is a checkmate after queen takes e2, that follows. So, kids, remember... Remember this checkmating pattern with the rook and uh, knight uh, when the king is in the corner? Okay, knight g5. I played knight g5 and uh, I was calculating queen g7 in in the game. And I was planning to play queen e5, which is very beautiful. The same deflecting idea. Uh, but Irina made this game even more beautiful because she uh, retreated her queen to c7. And after that, also the same, the same move, queen e5 follows, but it comes with a check, which is already more beautiful, more forced way. Queen takes e5, again, we see the same checkmating pattern. Uh, if queen g7, then you can choose either rook takes h7 or smother checkmate on f7. And um, rook g7 was played in the game, and here again, I have a choice. I played rook d8 check. And this poor queen, she's trying to protect her king, uh, her rook on g7, and they back rank the square d8. And as we know, it's not a good idea to let one piece protect two or three things at the same time simultaneously. And it doesn't work here for black's queen as well. So queen takes d8, rook takes h7, and again, I must thank Arena for letting me check give this checkmate final blow on the board it's always a pleasure to finish the game with a checkmate and of course i was very happy to win this game very fast and uh, let my uh russian national team to victory it's the second year in a row that we win this online olympiad and uh, for me every team victory is a very special event and i'm very happy that uh, i played um for my team and I played well because of course this uh, game is a, a little masterpiece at least the final few moves uh, that um, people will hopefully will enjoy but to tell you the truth I enjoyed uh, much more my uh, victory against Juvenjun when I played with white pieces it's a very quiet absolutely opposite of what we uh, saw in this game um, encounter but again I think nowadays one needs to be universal and uh, one needs to um, play positionally as well as tactically and again I'm very happy to help my team win the gold and I hope that you enjoyed this video review on my game on my final game against arena Krush in the final match russia versus usa of the online chess olympia 2021 and that's one of the uh, decisive victories that let my team win the event take care play chess and see you all soon